say. Um, today, please listen in. I already started. Uh, this is me. I'm the teacher here. Good. Um, today we're going to have the last, the last version of probability. And in fact, we spent now, including today, three times with probability, one on the discrete, two on the continuous, and some of what I'm saying today is working both for discrete and continuous worlds. Um, this is a step in between, as I've said a few times, uh, where we started the first day. We started the first day by looking at some numbers, by looking at data in an Excel sheet, basically, to say it a bit naively. Um, so looking at data is something we started out with, if I've, as I've said a few times also. Back in elementary school, back in the second or third grade, we started looking at numbers. Um, this course is about looking at numbers, but a bit more intelligently than we were taught back in the second or third grade. We shouldn't stop looking at the numbers. That's what we did the first time. But we should use a bit of probability to be intelligent about how we look at the numbers. So we did a bit of probability, and we'll finish it today, or at least the part of it that we will use. Uh, in the discrete, like two weeks ago, we met some specific discrete distribution, the binomial, the hypergeometric, and the Poisson. In the continuous, last time, we met the uniform, the log normal, and especially we met and get acquainted quite nicely, closely to uh, the normal distribution. Today, we are going to meet one more distribution. Are you there, Jebe? Yeah. Are we having sound? Welcome to you out there. Good. <laughs> uh, sorry for the bit of technical problems this morning. Let's see if we are through. Have picture also. Maybe that's pushing it a bit here. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, it's not a morning for pictures, so for video, apparently. Is there actually sound still, or is it... Uh, so it's just the, the video thing, which is down. Let me, uh, in a way, basically just ignore this video part. There will be video recordings, even so. Let me find... My presentation, week four. So the intro I already did. We're going to do the new exponential. We're going to look at some calculation rules, as I said, and look at a few examples using those rules, uh, important rules to think about. And finally, we're going to look at something which we call transformations and normal plotting, a tool for investigation of whether things look to be normal or not. The intro was the one I already gave you. We had some discrete and some continuous distributions. So today we do, in addition, the exponential distribution. One more new distribution. Here it comes. First topic of this morning. Here it is. That's it. Now we're getting used to seeing distributions, so we don't have to get frightened by something like this. Well, let me just jump. Sorry for jumping, but I know I have a picture here. Um, this is the exponential. Do we have uh, an issue? It's one of those mornings, apparently. Yeah. 
accidents come in clusters of 2.714, or a multiple of that. Um, <laughs> this is really annoying. Well, um, so basically this is the exponential function, as you may have uh, seen it from, if you had some exponential functions in uh, math at some point in time. Let's look at the density formula again. I jumped back to the formula. It's not the pure exponential, it's sort of the exponential to uh, minus x over beta and then divided by beta, you could say, such that there are different versions of it controlling how fast it sort of decays to zero depending on the size of beta. Beta being positive, though, it has to decay to zero, not to infinity. Otherwise, such an exponential uh, running to infinity could not be a density function thing. I mean, it's there as a mathematical function, but we couldn't use it as a model for probabilities. That wouldn't make sense. We can use this as a model for probabilities if we make sure that the total area in there equals one. What is the total area? It's actually the integral of zero to infinity of f of x dx equals one, as I said. So this is a model for some probabilities at least. That's as far as we maybe could uh, acknowledge it. Actually, it's a quite nice model for certain probabilities. Um, to put a few words on it, for those of you having also some more probability theory in another course maybe, the exponential is a special case of the more general gamma distribution. The gamma has two unknowns, where if we fix one of those at the proper value, we get an exponential. Where the exponential is used is basically for this type of real life situations, you could say. I mean, I gave you a probability distribution, and then you say, yep, you can say that, but where can we use it? Where could it become useful for real life phenomena? Well, the real life phenomena where this could become useful is stated here. That is when we basically wait for something or is interested in measuring uh, the lifespan of something. It could be seriously the lifespan of us as human beings if we we're in the medical research, or if we are engineers and producing computers. It could be the reliability, it could be the lifespan of different products that we produce in our company, right? So if we're interested in things like this, exponential distribution will come up as the natural model for such a situation. I mean, I'm not going to give a detailed argument, a mathematical proof why. Under certain assumptions about how real life acts, the exponential distribution pops up. It's a kind of mathematical thing. You can dig into my extra math thing if you want to get a feeling of such a proof. Um, there is an analogy. Let us take this and then I jump back to the over to the slide with the material. <coughs> We have a connection here now in the same system between what you have learned as a Poisson distribution in the discrete world and now what I'm presenting to you, the exponential distribution in a continuous time or in a continuous world. And the Poisson process, or Poisson process is sort of the, the system, the random system where both of these features can be seen. So it's the same system, but it's two different ways of looking at the systems that will produce two different ways of uh, two different types of distributions. Here's the system. I'm thinking about the system of random events over time, right? For instance, um, hits on a website, customers coming into a shop, things like that. When you're interested in that, the number of phone calls and in a, if you have a call center, phone calls into your call center, things that happen randomly over time, that's a kind of a system, right? Now you can observe this system in different ways. For instance, as we did two weeks ago, we could say, I want to count the number of events during an hour, 
right? I want to count the number of events during an hour. That would naturally be modeled by a Poisson distribution, as I told you two weeks ago. That's the system I'm talking about again now. However, I might be interested in a different feature of this system. I might be interested in subsequent waiting times, you could say, or the time between events. That's another way of observing this system. Now something, now I had a call, now uh, 62 seconds later I had another call, uh, 43 seconds later I had another call. So these are the observations, 63 seconds, 42 seconds, 2 seconds. Uh, so, so that's the same system, but now I'm observing the waiting times, as we sometimes call it. It could be lifespans, but now I call it waiting times. These waiting times would then naturally be modeled by an exponential distribution. So it's the same system, and we'll see that in the example in a minute. So if we do the theoretical exercise of finding the mean and the variance using the formulas, continuous time definitions of mean and variance that I showed you last time, we would achieve these results. That the mean, if we define a probability distribution like this by the density here, then the mean of this, mu, the mean of x, you could say, would be the integral from 0 to infinity of x, f of x, dx, actually equals beta. Just to point out what I state here. And if we do the variance, a little more complicated, but not much, we would see that beta squared would be the variance. It's just to say that the mean and variance is there to be found. So we could, uh, I mean, if we are playing around with the, the exponential in, as a model for something real, we already know uh, what to expect, that's a mean, and we also know how much will it vary from uh, event to event. I mean, from waiting time to waiting time, the variability of waiting times could be a good thing to know for us. Let's try it. Let's try it. So here is a situation given to us. The time between customer arrivals at some shop, could be a post office or some as here. Let's assume that we have an exponential distribution with mean of two minutes. So on average, we wait two minutes for the next customer, right? Then uh, we can start uh, playing around with different sort of features of this system, different sort of macro events, like what is the probability? So we already, we always take the, the outset in, now we had a customer in this event, now customer just arrived. What is the chance, what is the probability, what is the risk, any word you want to use, that we don't have any customers within the next two minutes? So if we say that x has an exponential distribution with beta, beta being 2, um, what is then the probability that, yeah, what's the probability, what's the event in terms of waiting time? x, I didn't say, I didn't write that, but now I say it. x is the waiting time for the next customer. What is the event in terms of the waiting time for next customer? How do we translate these words into something that has to do with the waiting time? That's the little challenge we have here. I say little, but sometimes it's the biggest one, actually, to, to turn the verbal descriptions of real-life questions into math. And then when we haven't have put them into math, we need a bit of tools to actually take it from there, but the tools are not that complicated, I would state. How long should we wait for the next customer to have an event that matches that we don't see anyone in two minutes? I think I said it now, didn't I? We have to wait at least two minutes or more for the next customer. That's the event I asked about the probability of. Actually, this one you don't find in a table in the book. So, we could, if we wanted to, do a bit of integrals. What a nice sound.
I'm, I'm having a constant discussion with my 14-year-old about cellular phone sounds during other activity. And uh, I don't know if I'm winning. I mean, as an adult, finally, you lose. But uh, you may have some small local victories along the time until you finally lose big time. But anyway, that's life. Um, let's move on. This would be, there are different ways of putting this. We could say like this. Then I could say it would be the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x. I could even say since beta is 2, why not say 2? e to minus x have 2 dx. And then I could see it as a little uh, high school exercise and see if I can remember how to find such an integral. How many in here would feel confident that you could do that? <laughs> okay. Well, to all of you, from all of us, no, uh, should not start singing now. Luckily, luckily we don't have to do it then if we have R. It's just as if you didn't get started with R, here's really a reason to get started with R, right? If you don't want to do such an integral, I could give you such a question at the exam, maybe. So uh, you, you might want to deal a bit with R then. Not necessarily, be, it might not help you. It depends on how nasty I put the question, of course. Uh, and that depends on my mood on the day. So anyway. Um, let's see if we can manage to find this probability that we were asked. Px, beta was supposed to be 2, then we'll see if we can get it. I just have to remember whether. I should also, sorry, uh, I rem forgot to increase the appearance a little bit here. No, I did not forget. Just my eyes. Um, Right. I think this should be this should be the probability of being less than or equal to two, and then what I asked was the probability of being to the right of two, right? So the number would be 0 0.018 if I'm correct. That's uh, also what I was fearing a little bit here. So the right. The rate, oh yeah, the rate, and I, uh, that's, the, that's the inverse, actually, of the average number of events per time. Uh, sorry, the, the waiting time is one thing. The average waiting time is one thing. The rate is the one we are used to think about in the Poisson distribution. And the rate, actually, so, so that's, I mean, you can see that in the R node, actually. So the option in in uh, the R function is actually 1 over beta, not beta. Thank you. So the correct number comes here. Which, by the way, if you do the math, is the same as the exponential taken to, I believe, I remember, to minus 1. So let's say... If you did the little math exercise, you would get e to minus 1. You can see what happens. The 2 comes in and gives a 1, and the 0 gives something that disappears, uh, a 1 that disappears with a 1, if you, if you do the, the integral. Um, so anyway, that's the result here. Let's um, move on, continue. 
do the example, finish the example. Just to illustrate explicitly this link to the Poisson distribution, it's the same situation, it's the same question. However, now we are given a condition here, we are said, try to find the answer using the Poisson instead. What is... What is the average number of events? You could say, here we have a choice. Let's, let's think in terms of the Poisson, or let's think how many events on average will occur in two minutes. It's not a trick question. It's common sense. If we on average wait two minutes for a customer, then the average number occurring in two minutes is one, right? So uh, this common sense uh, in, inversion you can use. That's the correct link, as I stated before also. Then we could find the probability of a, we could say, y is now the number of, a, let's say, arrivals. Arrivals in two minutes. That would then be Poisson with lambda, and I emphasize it's a two-minute lambda, just to be clear on that, and the two-minute lambda is one. Could have chosen other ones, but this is a convenient one to actually use here. Um, so, what is the probability of a Poisson being zero? Well, if we remember the formula for the Poisson, I typically have some difficulties in remember, but then I have a place where I can look. Using a one, I would get one. So lambda is one. I plugged in lambda in the Poisson formula, and I plugged in a zero for x. And altogether, luckily, of course, we get the same result as before. One more little example. We'll just do... We can actually also use the binomial, but I'll skip this here. It's not that important. Any questions? So too fast. I'm, I'm too fast? On which part? On the, on the whole thing? Okay, on the writing. Sorry about that. Yeah. Let's... Um, one more thing just to make a point here related to what I've just said, the common sense point. Here's the same situation, but we're asked a different question. We're asked a question about a 10 minutes period. What is the probability that we have no customers in the 10 minutes period? I mean, why would we compute this? Well, it's nice to know what is the chance that no one is there. Can you go on the toilet for a short or a long time? What is the risk of being caught in doing that? Um, anyway, uh, different features of your system is nice to, nice to know. Um, calculate the probability that we see no more customers in 10 minutes. Use the Poisson, not the exponential. Well, we do the little trick I believe I told you. We just say... Um, how many do we expect on average during a 10 minute period? Five, right? Common sense. And then we use that. Use the Poisson, and like before. I don't want to write it up. Like before. Actually, we could use the binomial by saying, what is the probability in one interval? And then we need five intervals in a row with no one showing up. And that would then be five, like a binomial. And we could use the binomial. That would, um, I think the result then would give this one. e to the minus first raised to five. And that is the result. OK. That was the first part, George, with this exponential.